Hey guys, welcome to this new Flutter game development series. In this series, we are going to make a super simple 2D game in Flutter. Basically, it will be a clone of the T-Rex game that you see in Google Chrome. So, let's create a new Flutter project for this game. I'll name this project as Dino underscore Run. Let's remove all the comments from this demo app. So, before we get started, let me quickly show you how the game will probably look at the end. For that, I'll launch the emulator. As you can see, we have a splash screen displaying logos. Then, we will have a main menu from where you can either start the game or change some game options. And on clicking play, the game will begin. So, as you can see, in this game, our character is a small dinosaur who keeps on running towards right. From the right side, different types of enemies are spawned randomly and they keep on moving towards left. And the players just have to avoid getting hit by the enemies by tapping on the screen. As this was just a prototype, I didn't add any health system, but you can see that when our character gets hit by enemy, its animation changes. And if you look at the top left corner, you can see that we have a button to pause and resume the game. Right now, this prototype does not have a pause menu, but most probably, the final version will have a pause menu to allow users to restart the game or go to main menu. Finally, at the top center, we have the score display which keeps on continuously updating. And that is the whole game. So in this first video, we'll just set up the project. So for this game, I'll be using a package called Flame. Flame is basically a 2D game engine written for Flutter. So to get Flame, you'll have to head over to Flame's pub.dev page. Link will be in the description. From there, just copy the dependency specified under installing tab and add it under dependencies section of your pubspec YAML. Let's save this file to automatically run pub get command. While that is running, let's go to the official website of Flame Engine, which is flame-engine.org. Here you can click on the docs link at the top or get started button to go to the documentation of this engine. If you are completely new to game development, I would highly recommend you to go through at least the basic concepts section. Rest of the things you can read as and when required. Ok, now that we have added flame in our pub spec, let's see what other things are necessary before we can start coding. So if you go to the file structure section in the documentation and read it, you'll find out that to use assets like images, sprites and audio, you'll have to have a folder called assets. And under this folder, you need to again have two subdirectories namely images and audio. Basically. Flame is designed to automatically look for image assets under assets slash images and audio assets under assets slash audio. So I'll quickly go to our project and create these folders and subfolders. And to access assets under this folder, we'll have to add them to assets section in pubspec. So I'll open up pubspec YAML, uncomment the assets section and specify both the subfolders under assets folder. And now let's save this. Now we have completed all the setup required to start using Flame Engine. But before I show you how to create a game object, I would like to quickly talk about Game Loop, mainly for those who haven't created any kind of game before. So if you look at any kind of game, you'll find that almost all of them have a game world which works with a predefined set of rules. And you as a player have one or many ways in which you can affect the game world. And if you dig a little deep, you'll notice that all that a game does is, it sets up some initial state of the game world, then gets inputs from player, modifies the state of the game world depending on player input, and finally it renders the drawable entities on the screen. And to make the game responsive and feel like real time, last three steps are repeated continuously. And this is where the concept of game loop comes in. Basically a game loop is an infinite loop in which we first process all the user input then we update the game state, like if user presses left arrow key, we might want to change the position of player character. And at the end, we render the player character at the new updated position on screen. And that's how almost all the game work. So to make our lives easier, Flame Engine takes care of the game loop. We just have to take care of creating and modifying the game state depending on player input. So to show you how to create and start an empty game, I'll go to main function in main.dart 
Here you can see that we have a run app function which runs an instance of my app. So instead of my app, let's run a game instance. For that, I'll first create an instance of base game class. Base game is a class provided by Flame Engine which provides a default implementation of game class. Ideally, you should create your own game class extending base game. This gives you more control over how the game behaves. But for now, I'll directly use this class. So once we have an instance of base game, we can pass in game.widget to run app. Dot widget property exposes the game world as a widget which can be directly used in Flutter widget tree. So let's save this and run the app. And you can see that we get a black screen. This is perfectly normal because right now our game world does not have anything to display. But this doesn't mean that the game loop is not running. Even right now, the base game is going through all the three steps of game loop. So before displaying anything in this game, let's make sure that the game.widget property is really working. For that, I'll first remove all the counter code from my homepage state class. Now let's create a state variable of type base game. To initialize this variable, I'll override init state method. And similar to what we did before run app, I'll create an instance of base game here. And now in the body of this scaffold, I can specify game.widget. To see this in action, let's revert the code we wrote in main function and pass in instance of my app again. And while I'm at it, I'll also change the title property to dino run. Now if I save this and hot restart the app, you can see that we get the app bar on top of game widget. Now let's see how to display something in our game. For that, I'll first go to main function and call widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized. This call is always necessary when you want to call something before run app. Now as this app will be a game, it does not make sense to display the status bar at top and navigation bar at bottom. So to make the game full screen, we can use flame.util.fullscreen. Let's do a hot restart to see the changes. And as you can see, now the app is running in full screen. Let's also remove the app bar as we don't need it. Now to add something in this game, we'll have to use components. You can read about them in the flame documentation. But to explain in short, components are building block of any game made with flame engine. They are roughly equivalent to widgets in a flutter widget tree. And you can see that there are so many components that Flame Engine provides you out of the box. But for now, I just want to display an image of our main character in the game. And in 2D games, images of characters or entities are generally known as sprites. So all we need is a sprite component. So to display a sprite, let's first add it to assets slash images folder in our project. For this, I'll copy the Dino characters version 1.1. zip to the images folder of our project. These assets are totally free and I have downloaded them from h.io. Link to these assets will be in the description. Let's extract this zip here and then delete the original zip. You can see that the extracted folder contains a lot of things, but we don't need everything. If you go under sheets folder, you can see that it has four images. Each image is a sprite sheet for four different types of characters. Sprite sheets are nothing but just a bunch of sprites grouped into a single image. This is done so that you can load up the whole sprite sheet all at once and then choose programmatically which part of the sprite sheet you want to display. This is generally much better than loading multiple small sprites. Also, if you look closely at the sprite sheets, you can see that they are showing the characters in different positions with minor changes. Basically, this sprite sheet will help us in creating different animations for these characters. More on this later. For now, just copy the one which says dino sprites tardpng and paste it in the images folder. Next, we'll also need a GIF from the GIF folder of this asset pack. Again, I'll copy the dino sprite underscore tart dot gif to images folder of our project. 
and now we can delete the extracted folder as we don't need it anymore so let's see how we can display one of the image using sprite component if you check the game instance you can see that we can call a method named add on this instance this method needs an instance of component class so basically you can add multiple components to a game using this method once you do that the game class will take care of rendering those components on screen now let's see how to create a sprite component if you go to the definition of sprite component by placing your cursor on sprite component and pressing f12 you can see that internally it holds an object of sprite class and to create an object of sprite component you can use one of these three named constructors in this case i want to display the gif and if you check the dimensions of that image you'll find that it is a square image so i can safely use sprite component dot square i'll set this size to 64 and then i'll pass name of the image and let's store this sprite component in a variable called dino sprite now i can add this dino sprite to the game instance using game dot add dino sprite now to see the images i'll have to stop and relaunch the app because we added some new asset images while the app was running and as you can see we now have our dino in the game world you might be wondering why is it at the top left corner so this is because every position component that you create gets created at origin of the game world which is 0,0, .0. and in flame engine this origin is located at top left corner just like most of the other game engines out there x coordinate increases from left to right and y coordinate increases from top to bottom now let's try to move the sprite to a new location for that in init state after creating dino sprite i'll set its x and y coordinate both to 100 and to see the change we'll have to do a hot reload as this code is written in init state and as you can see now the sprite has moved to a new location so this is how we can control where a sprite component gets rendered now before we end this video let's set the orientation of this game to landscape for this i'll again go to main function here i'll call flame.util.setLandscape and since full screen and set landscape both written future I'll await for them to complete before launching the main app. This means the main function will now have to be made async. And now if we do a hot reload you can see that the game orientation gets changed to landscape. So that is it for this introduction video. I hope you were able to follow along. If not you can always drop a comment below or join my telegram channel for detailed discussion. As always, code for this project is also available in a GitHub repository linked in the description. So anyways, if you liked this video, do hit that like button and maybe also consider subscribing for more such content. I'll hope to see you in the next one.